And now it's uh, John Canelopoulos' turn. Uh, he's going to present us uh, very nice uh, insights as regards uh, a custom ablation doing, doing through ray tracing and using a very innovative technology. This is John Canalopoulos from Athens, Greece, in New York City, New York. I'm very excited to share with you some fascinating clinical data with a equally fascinating technology. These are initial clinical outcomes treating uh, myopic eyes with automated ray tracing optimization through a custom platform by uh, Alcon named Innovize and using a single diagnostic device that, as we will see in this presentation, combines several uh, different entities called SideMap. These are my financial disclosures, and uh, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, we know that uh, in today's refractive surgery planning, and we're seeing a very busy slide here from the left where we started using Snellone Acuity and a manual refraction to place the data into our lasers and, and achieve excellent visual correction results. Of course, as keen uh, surgeons seeking excellence, we uh, endeavored with uh, new technology to try and improve the results from using a standard clinical refraction. We're seeing the wafer nebrometry that has been used almost 20 years now in order to potentially improve visual outcomes. Uh, we're seeing topography and tomography in the middle. These are a very uh, delicate and detailed diagnostics that can help us uh, achieve better uh, results uh, in custom ablations and also biometry that can help us through uh, precise axial length measurements achieve better understanding and refractive uh, corrections. Now, on the bottom, I'm also placing an anterior segment OCT device that can give us through very accurate uh, cornea thickness mapping and cornea epithelial mapping an idea of how uh, this may affect refraction and correcting refractive errors. Now, let's go to the customized ablations we have used for many years now, and this is from my presentation um, in New Orleans in 2004, topography guided uh, through the Alcon platform that was initially designed to improve eyes that were problematic. So in a therapeutic mode, and we're seeing here how we were able to enlarge small optical zones that the older technology lasers had, how we were even able to treat a regular cornea such as keratoconus and ectasia, and even on the bottom slide, you can see a scar uh, treated on the left, in the middle, the result achieved and the difference on the right. Some very dramatic um, interventions to be able to use refractive surgery as a therapeutic tool as well. And it was not uh, until Alcan's FDA study with topography guided, which interestingly enough was performed on virgin myopic eyes, not as a therapeutic tool, but as, but as a primary tool in treating myopia with LASIK that we saw something very interesting and something very pleasant. A very large percentage of eyes, larger than any other platform that went through the FDA, uh, still up till now, uh, showed a gain in visual acuity, a gain in lines of vision uh, from uh, corrected to uncorrected postoperatively. And it was this landmark study, in my opinion, that drew our attention into using custom topography guided ablations, even in virgin eyes. We have been doing that for many years in our practice before, but this was validation for us that indeed using it in virgin eyes can give you better visual outcomes. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, for instance, I think I, I overshot here. I'm going to go to the previous slide. This is in practical terms why. We're seeing uh, the two eyes of one patient treated with LASIK. Both eyes are 20-20. Everybody should be happy here. But if we look at the postoperative pentacams and topographies on the right eye, we can still see significant topographic astigmatism, where in the left eye that has been corrected. And the difference here is that the left eye gained two lines of vision. So I think this simple clinical example underlines the facility and the efficacy of uh, a customized ablation in treating not only the low order aberrations such as astigmatism and topographic astigmatism, but also the high order aberrations that angle kappa can induce through this astigmatism in the eye as an optical system. And we've been working on this for 
a uh, very long time, we introduced in 2016 the concept of TMR, of using topography modified refraction when we're using topography guided ablations for virgin biopic eyes, meaning we don't treat our clinical refraction, we tweak our cl clinical refraction based on the topography suggested amount of cylinder and axis. And we showed that uh, we have superior results uh, with that. Although this concept has a lot of manual calculation and input from the surgeon and the surgical team. And this brings us, this is a great prelude. So what we're gonna be talking about now to ray tracing. This is a, a picture of ray tracing and how this concept works. It's completely automized. So what happens here is, and we're seeing a picture of uh, laser interferometry. This is where the biometry comes in place, which measures precisely axial length measurements of the eye, the anterior chamber, the thickness of the lens, the thickness of the posterior chamber. And these numbers are used to calculate a model eye for each individual eye of each patient. So this is a very big shift in paradigm. Instead of what lasers have done up till now, using the standard Goldstrand eye model for every single patient and every treatment, the device will design a avatar, if you may, model eye for each individual eye of each patient and will base its ray tracing on this, not theoretical eye, because this eye is based on the actual interferometry, very precise measurements of the eye that we're evaluating, the eye that we will treat. Um, so uh, let's jump to the next slide. Uh, ray tracing is not new. Uh, Alcan has studied it uh, uh, back in the uh, 2008, 2009 era. Uh, of course, at the time it was performed uh, with manual calculations. Several devices were used, um, wavefront, uh, pentacam, uh, sign fluke imaging, and biometry to calculate ray tracing, and the calculated numbers were incorporated in laser treatments, and it showed that an impressive 50% of eyes almost gained uh, one or two lines of vision at 12 months, and uh, these are data that have been published already. But again, as I mentioned, these data were manually calculated, and we're coming to the new era of Innovise where this is done all by artificial intelligence. Uh, so basically, uh, in parallel to introducing this technology, I'll share with you some data we presented at Ascaris this year. Uh, it was, of course, a virtual meeting uh, last May. So these uh, data are, are uh, harvested, are captured by a single device now, and the device is called SiteMap. It's a commercially available device that has been adopted by Alcan and transformed, <clears throat> excuse me, into a diagnostic device that of which data are used to calculate ray tracing. So it performs this single device, three different measurements. It performs uh, sine fluke tomography of the cornea. It performs uh, biometry through interferometry and also performs a Hartman shack wafer measurement with large and small pupil, as you can see on the lower picture. And these three diagnostic entities are used then through the automated artificial intelligence of the ray tracing in a vice software to calculate the perfect high order and low order aberrations for the treatment of each eye. So quickly through the four steps, step number one, as I mentioned before, is using the biometry via interferometry that the sitemap device captures to create a model eye for each individual eye of each patient. In step number two, the sign fluke tomography data are used to anterograde ray trace from the device through the air, through the interface of the air with the tear film, through the anterior surface of the cornea, through the cornea, out to the posterior surface of the cornea and into the aqueous, and then through the aqueous in, uh, in incidence with the anterior surface of the lens. Now, these are 2,000 rays that are traced theoretically through calculations of the um, Innovise AI. And then there's a step three that we're using 2,000 rays traced in retrograde fashion. These are based on the wavefront data that the sitemap uh, device provides. And the, these data are analyzed by the Innovise artificial intelligence software to be traced from the retina through the vitreous cavity uh, to inside the uh, backside of the crystalline lens, through the crystalline lens, and to the anterior surface of the 
lens. So now we have 2000 rays traced anterograde and retrograde to meet at the anterior surface of the lens. And a small step four is to calculate the tilt between the level of the cornea and the level of the lens. These should be parallel uh, and sometimes they're not certain de degrees apart. And this is also calculated in the correction. Very difficult uh, to describe because it's a uh, millions and millions of uh, individual calculations, but uh, the concept is, is fascinating because it's basically automated uh, once the captures are validated and they're good, everything else is done by the uh, software. And these were the data we presented at Ascaris. Uh, we found uh, pristine um, data as far as the accuracy in a very large uh, spectrum of uh, cases treated. Uh, all eyes gained the line of vision, about 40% uh, of eyes gained two lines of vision. And we can also see on the bottom uh, right graph the stability that was excellent through uh, the year. Now, uh, we have more uh, explanation on this on the YouTube video, and you're welcome to visit it through our laser vision practice uh, website. I'm going to quickly show you a clinical example. So what's different in the Innovice software is that you see in the yellow bracket the clinical subjective refraction. The blue bracket uh, underlines the Innovice refraction, which now becomes the default refraction. So if we want to go Innovice, we don't have to change anything. It's automatically into the machine. Uh, this is a clinical example of uh, the case, uh, a young patient, 29 years old, with significant myopia, uh, about five uh, myopia, almost two dabs of astigmatism. You can see uh, on top the epithelial maps, the sign fluke imaging, the vario topography imaging, and the wafer data. Uh, treatment was accomplished through femtosecond laser LASIK. These are the Innovise calculations and the Innovise used to calculate the eye um, several months post-operatively with an impressive uh, 2010 and two lines of vision gain. So uh, we're dealing with the technology. Of course, there's small exceptions. For instance, this is an example where the epithelial maps would deter us from treating. And also the uh, Placido disc uh, topography is a little big use, so we would probably treat uh, the anterior surface before we went in advice on that patient. It treats basically all of the myopia, a very broad range of myopia and astigmatism and uh, optical zones up to seven millimeters. So as you saw, and again, it's very difficult to transfer all this uh, tremendous uh, technology and clinical application within a few minutes. Uh, we're dealing with a fascinating technology that can validate the ultimate refractive error calculated by artificial intelligence. And not only that, it's able to customize uh, the actual treatment that will re reduce, basically eliminate all high order and low order aberrations for each individual eye. It's really a pleasure and fascinating to work with this technology because it's validating all the work that we've done in the past to work through custom platforms and pushing the envelope to not only achieving 2020 vision in patients, but achieving the maximum that each eye can produce. I'm very privileged to have been working with this technology. I'm very thankful to all the Alcon team and of course to you for your attention. And I will close with some disclosures uh, from our uh, uh, colleagues in Alcon. Uh, and again, thank you so much for your attention. This is John Canalopoulos signing out. Thank you. Thank you, John, for this excellent presentation as well. Uh, and I'd like also to thank Ahmed for uh, his great one. And we have 10 minutes of our questions uh, and answers. So we got some questions from the audience. Uh, I'm going to start uh, with Ahmed. Uh, 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 one of the uh, followers is interested in uh, knowing how the patients are describing their satisfaction after panoptics implantation. What do they say? I mean, we saw very that very nice example but this, what is the most wowing effect that they have, they get? Uh, I think uh, when they can read without glasses, that's the most important part, but uh, that's the most satisfying part for them. And uh, as I said in my presentation, we have to show them uh, they're not doctors and they don't know if everybody is seeing like that with the intraocular lenses. So with the trifocals, they're most happy to see without glasses, but you have to show them once more 
and I do it in every visit just to remind that uh, that what we achieved with their money they paid to us for this lens. I mean, you, you are a very, very prominent uh, anterior segment surgeon, uh, and you have a lot of experience uh, with the uh, presbyopia correcting IUS. Uh, what do you think is the main advantage of panoptics uh, over the other uh, presbyopia correcting IULs? I think it's a good uh, uh, balance with uh, nighttime problems, nighttime glare, and reading well. In time of restore, the previous lens, I think the patient can read better, maybe, but they ha had more uh, problems with the light in, uh, in night driving. So for panoptics, I think it's uh, currently one of the best lenses gives us the best part of both worlds. Uh, so they can drive and not very uh, having a lot of problems with the nighttime vision, light issues, these photopsias, and they can read. And also the computer vision is very important for today's patient. And this uh, trifocality gives us the that distance to us and it helps a lot so most of the people are reading from the phones or the uh, tablets can i can i ask a question uh, of course illumination when they read and panoptics give us a good uh, distance for that john ask your question Yes, first of all, thanks so much for having me. It's really a pleasure and honor to share the podium with Ahmed and yourself. Uh, my question is to Ahmed, is there a learning curve for the patients to become accustomed on, on how to use a trifocal lens? I mean, do you or your staff have to work with them as far as lighting, as far as positioning of their computer, their smartphone? Is Are there any pearls that you can use to make this even better and easier for patients? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the first thing is uh, they need good light for reading small print. If not it on computer, it's like reading a book. If it is their uh, bedroom with poor lighting conditions, uh, they have to adjust the light for that. Uh, for the computers, I think the biggest problem for the tablets or the phones are uh, people stop blinking when they are looking to them and dry eyes become a big problem. And I have patients coming few months later saying that I can see well now. And just as one drop of artificial tears change the vision a lot. So uh, they have to be uh, treated for dry eyes. And I tell them put artificial tears. An Ankara, my city is in the middle of Anatolia. It's very dry. And we have a lot of dry eye patients. So I tell them put uh, artificial tears while reading every one hour if they have problem with reading. They say, I start, I can read very well, but after 20 minutes, I can't read anymore. That's the timeline for uh, eye becoming dry. Hmm. But in Thank most you. of Thank the patients, uh, it's not a big problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ahmed. I'm going to answer a couple of questions regarding BVT that I was asked. Uh, one of the uh, colleagues of us is asking me, what is the feedback uh, from the patients? Uh, well, patients uh, are uh, extremely pleased about the quality of vision. In my hands, uh, this is the first time we have uh, a presbyopia corrected IUL, uh, really able to maintain quality of vision at all distances in all situations, uh, even at uh, like in nighttime and dark uh, uh, light conditions. So actually what these patients uh, are reporting uh, is the same that they would report with a monofocal IOL. And yet they get uh, uh, some, uh, not full range, uh, but most of the range of presbyopic correction. So they will not be able to read really close uh, as uh, panoptics uh, uh, allows uh, these patients to have. Uh, but as regards quality of vision, this is a very safe uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it's a, an IOL that use uh, I would say um, most widely and definitely wider than, than diffractive technology. Uh, I'm just asking myself the second question that I'm reading here. Uh, uh, what did the uh, BVT change in my practice? Uh, well, more than uh, uh, you know, uh, shifting 
eyes uh, from uh, trifocals like panoptics uh, to uh, BVT, I've seen many more patients who are indicated uh, to have a presbyopia correct in IOL when using BVT because all of the, of the issues related to quality of vision are virtually gone. And also all the issues related to uh, pre-existing ocular conditions where we are a little bit skeptical about implanting, uh, you know, diffractive technology. Well, now it looks much easier for these patients to have a presbyopia correcting solution without really challenging all the reduced, reduced quantum sensitivity and all the sequelae that may come. So I really think that uh, this uh, uh, is going to expand uh, our numbers as a uh, conversion rates uh, uh, for uh, presbyopia correcting eye. And John, a couple of questions for you as well. Uh, um, someone is asking you, what is the biggest advantage for Innovise in your hands? Is it precision? Is it precision? Is it quality of vision on the patient side? What is the most important feature? I think it's an excellent uh, question, Francesco, and I think I learned it from you when you were uh, the president of the International Society of Refractive Surgery that we as refractive surgeons do not settle with good and very good. We always strive to achieve even better, push the boundaries to visual quality, uh, precision in our correction. What I have found um, in my experience with, with Innovice so far is the amazing simplicity. I think we were able to, to approximate what Innovise offers as far as uh, the complete low order and higher vibrations package for each individual eye. We were able to approximate that with multiple, multiple calculations. It took us hours, two or three hours for our staff to collect all the data, put them into the device, design the topography guided treatment and assume some of the changes that will happen. Now, all of this work is done within six seconds. The data come in, of course, we validate that the each individual capture is uh, precise and the device has its own safety margins to allow or disallow an exam to come through. And once that is done, you allow the artificial intelligence in the device software to calculate the low order and higher order operations and you're done it's it's fantastic i think that the simplicity and the accuracy that it offers is uh, unparalleled thank you john and my last question for this session is goes uh, again to you and i really like the answer not to sound too much commercial but uh, some of the people in the audience uh, is uh, asking where is the difference uh, given that all the companies all the platforms uh, have uh, some sort of customization. Is there anything out there that may be comparable to what Innovise does? Uh, I think that the, the FDA uh, trial for Innovise is, is currently uh, commencing. And we, yourself, myself, and several uh, clinical investigators in Europe are seeing numbers that we've never seen before with any other platform. So I think that although each company, each commercial entity, of course, wants to underline the advantages of their device. For me, although my practice does a small relative number of, of uh, patients, we do 300, 350 LASIK a year compared to some of my colleagues and friends in the U.S. that do 3,000 a year. I still think that safety, meaning identifying each individual eye, the device calculating high order and low order aberrations and giving you the ultimate efficacy in refraction and higher aberrations precision is unparalleled. You could never treat wrong numbers in the wrong eye. And that for me is, is something that you cannot have with any other device. So thank you so much, John and uh, Ahmed for this uh, very, very interesting discussion we had. Uh, it's time to wrap up. Uh, so again, uh, since my sincere thanks. Uh, hoping to see all of you very soon uh, in a live fashion, not only through the screen. Uh, I have to close this uh, symposium. And again, thanks for ICON for the space provided to present these exciting technologies. Bye-bye.